Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, and looking again at some beautiful conditions out there for the next couple of days. No major problems showing up for the Mid-South area, especially where it comes to anything involving severe weather, so definitely some good news on that. Not going to be seeing quite as blazing hot temperatures either, at least for a little bit. We get into the next few days after that. The heat's going to be back on toward about week's end, and then also seeing the possibility of some more showers and thunder thunderstorms back into the forecast as we head into the course of the rest of this next week and out of July into August if everything works, we could be looking at some very interesting conditions out there as we get into and around the area of early August. Maybe some much less hot weather coming our direction, which again for early August, I don't think anybody's going to be arguing with anytime soon. If you got any weather pictures, we'd love to see them. We'll show them some. We'll show you guys some of what you've been sending in over the weekend in just a little bit. So stick around for more on that. If you have any weather reports from around the mid south, we'd love to see what's going on in your neck of the woods. So give us a city and state location just to give us an idea of where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in this area or not. Uh, if you're in and around North Mississippi, West Tennessee, East Arkansas, that's the main broadcast area for News Channel 3. But if you're anywhere around the continental United States or around the world, let us know what's going on and, more importantly, what weather in your backyard is like. Just drop that into the comments section. If you can't stick around for the rest of our weather blog, weather information, the forecast scrolling in the red bar at the bottom of your screen, or you can get all the information again right here at wrag.com slash weather. We'd love to know more about what you've got going on into and around your location. So let us know about what's going on where you are and stick around for a lot more coming up here in just a little bit with News Channel 3. So stick around for more in just a little bit. It's like Gonzalez RG, super hot in San Antonio, Texas. Been quite some time since I've been back down that direction. Thank you very much for that one. Beautiful day in Corinth. Vicki Gibbs. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Welcome to everybody else uh, who's checking in for tonight at this point in time. Adamsville, 77 and clear. Kimmy Barnhill, thank you very much uh, for that one. Lafayette, Louisiana, and hot as H-E double hockey sticks here. This is a family show. I'll just uh, use that one for tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen Mamalakas, hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you very much. And snowing in Longtown, Mississippi. Nick Cook, I would love to see picture proof of that, but uh, thank you for checking in from that location. Into overnight, temperatures again dropping on down from the lower 80s into the lower 70s as we go into tomorrow. A few clouds sticking around, but not really too much up in that direction. James Ray, welcome from St. Louis. Say hello to my friends uh, Judy and Steve Newell up that direction. Uh, Judy just got done with a hockey accident. She's recuperating, doing well. And if you have a chance to go to, uh, what is it, Ted Dravis Frozen Custard. Haven't been back up there in quite some time. Would love to have one of those concretes once again to kind of cool us off by just a little bit. Gorgeous and clear in Middleton. Renee Walden, thank you very much uh, for that one. Nothing but partly cloudy in Jackson, Mississippi. Meg Mathis, Thank you very much. And guys, Tennessee, Joan Gray. Weather is nice, 82 degrees. Thank you very much for that. Respect back from Memphis, Bill Crouch Sr. Thank you very much for checking in from there tonight. Almanac Page, again, just a bit below normal today. We didn't even make 90 degrees. And for mid to late July, that's pretty unusual, but very welcome. No question about that. 74 spot on average. Record high for today, set back in 1943. 103 degrees. Record, wouldn't it be nice? Low temperature of 53. Got to go all the way back to World War II for that one out there. We're still well ahead on precipitation. That brings up a question about how we're doing on wildfire danger. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Sun has set, but unfortunately got blocked out by some clouds around the area of Shelby Farms Park, our brand new webcam there, back around Hyde Lake. Traffic on Farm Road moving along quite nicely at this time. And the construction in and around the area right around I-240 in Poplar. This is not a still picture. This is live from our Hilton East Memphis camera. Westbound Poplar, eastbound Poplar shut down, and you can just barely see some of the traffic going on and the construction happening right back around the Park Avenue Railroad Crossing overpass here 
Again, this is going to be wrapped up in about the next uh, 10 hours or so, and all of this area will be back open again for early on Monday morning. But until then, everything in this area is still shut down. And again, if you're going to be going through anywhere around here, definitely want to get an alternate route just to be the safe side. Storm Tracker 3S radar, little if anything to show you at this point in time. Again, pretty dry thanks to those northwesterly winds we have coming through. That storm system that stirred up all that severe weather in parts of Indiana and back into Iowa over the last couple of days, that's what's responsible for actually bringing in the dry air to the Mid-South way back on down into around portions of Canada and right off the northern plain stage. You can see that very dry air coming in from the continent instead of off the ocean. So we're not getting as much moisture as we need for thunderstorms or really Really humid conditions out there, so dry air from the plain states keeping things toasty, but not exactly anything in the way of major amounts of problems out there. Danren Sykes, southeast Texas, which feels like 120 in the shade. Sounds like northeast Kansas on some days, as I recall. Thank you very much for that report. Susan Ashton from South Haven, Mississippi, 85 degrees. Thank you very much uh, for that one at this point in time. Thank you very much for the birthday wishes. Savvy Diva Donaldson, appreciate that. Michael Patrick Johns in Phoenix, missing hometown Memphis. Well, hopefully we can bring you some weather information into and around there. Uh, Richard Priestmeyer, Covington, Tennessee, much cooler tomorrow. Not really, but at least it'll be feeling a little bit nicer out there. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. Currently, again, we still have a few 90s on the heat index scale. U of M Earth Sciences Building checking in at 86, but combine that humidity with it, and you get 92 degrees for this evening. Temperatures, again, should be decently pleasant in overnight and not exactly broiling over the next several days, but we will see again the possibility of some pretty toasty conditions out there into the next few days as well. Now into tomorrow morning around the area of News Channel 3 Daybreak with Todd Demers. Could see some upper 60s to lower 70s back across the Mid-South once again, and that again is going to be as low as it gets. More cloud cover off and on. The computer is still very intent on putting rainfall back in the forecast, wrapping around the backside of that area of low pressure we just showed you. I don't see any chance of rainfall really anytime soon. Now, if you go east of the Tennessee River, middle Tennessee, north Alabama, you might pick up a bit of a sprinkle here, but I just don't see anything really for the Mid-South. That's going to be the main target zone for any rain or isolated thunder. Here in the Mid-South, still pretty dry and decently warm. Highs tomorrow in the mid to upper 80s, those northerly winds, part of those winds coming in from off of southern Canada. And while it's not going to really quote-unquote cool us off. It is going to do a pretty good job of keeping temperatures just below normal, and that is just fine for this time of the year, so no problem at all being seen there. Heading into very early Tuesday morning, again, upper 60s to lower 70s instead of the near 80-degree temperature lows, so looking quite nice there. And into the next few days, again, temperatures will be kind of heading back upwards again, mid to upper 80s for Monday. So not looking, ex again, exactly cooler, but at least we will see maybe a little bit better conditions and the way we drop the numbers here just below normal for the next couple of days. But we're also not seeing anything in the way of showers or thunderstorms just yet. So outdoor activities, that golf game you've got, swimming lessons for the kids, that church social coming up, whatever it is, first half of the week looks pretty good. Latter half of the week gets hotter add some more humidity into this, and we might be looking at more heat advisories toward week's end. We'll keep our eyes on that one, so keep it tuned for more on that. Welcome to everybody checking in uh, for this evening. Covington, Tennessee, Richard Priestmeyer, 81 degrees. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to hear on that one. 79 in Corinth, Lila Pardue. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there, and everybody else who's checking in uh, at this time. Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, 65 tonight. Daniel Beal, thank you for a nice view of some, at least somebody's getting some cooler weather out there at some point in time. Now, into the next few days, again, the jet stream, that river of air that oscillates through the northern portions of the United States up around Canada gets pushed way up to the poles area at this time of the year because that heat builds up that direction. A storm system over the Pacific can do a good job of sending heat way up into the colder portions of, say, at areas of Russia and Alaska, that can dislodge cold air and make it swoop on down into the Mid-South area or Canada or the Great Lakes or anywhere there. If everything works and it's looking better at this point in time, by the time we work our way out of July and into August, 
we may be seeing some much more pleasant temperatures and some drier conditions. Showers and thunderstorms into the weekend, but by the time we start August, ironically, some of the hottest temperatures of the year can be had here. We may be starting off August in the lower to mid 80s if everything holds, and here's hoping it does. Now this forecast, again, could change a lot in the next several days. Again, the farther out you get, the more variations there are in the forecast. So the closer we get, the more we'll know. But if this holds, we could be seeing some very nice conditions out there as we get into August, as we go throughout the rest area in there. Uh, Aaron Nicholas Kirkpatrick, global warming, is it real? It's called climate change, and yes, it is. Thank you very much for asking that. Uh, 80 degrees in Senatobia, Megan Meglin Dressler, two-point typeface and bifocals. Sorry about that. Meg Megian, I hope I'm saying that correctly. 106 in Kyle, Texas today. Thank you very much uh, for that one. James Ray, yes, I was didn't know how to pronounce that. I, I seem to remember it as Ted Dravis, I think Ted Drews, I'm not too sure, but uh, man, some good custard up there uh, in St. Louis. No wind, 80.6 degrees in Crenshaw, Mississippi. Joyce Johnson Berry, thank you very much uh, for that report out there. Now, for the rest of the forecast, Again, we're not seeing any problems into the tropics. That tropical air we had has been pushed out into the Gulf and off the Atlantic, and that's where you've got all the thunderstorms taking place. Sea surface temperatures, the warmer conditions showing up as dark red, showing some very warm conditions over the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean. This is where we see the development of tropical storms, mostly at this time of the year, instead of out into the Atlantic. So we're not seeing much developing here, and you can thank after Africa for sending us even more dust, doing a good job of blocking out some of the sunshine. So as long as this pattern is bringing that dust out over the Atlantic and into the Caribbean, we're not going to see much happening. Now, are storms still possible? Absolutely. But not happening anytime soon. Again, tropical storm development, according to the National Hurricane Center, not expected anywhere over the Atlantic Basin or back toward the United States and down toward South America anytime soon. So very good news on that, but it only takes one storm. So please remember, let's all be safe as we head throughout the rest of hurricane season. We haven't even hit the halfway point. That happens in about mid-September. So we've got a ways to go on that into the next couple of days. Thanks to everybody for just joining us and tuning in. Again, for the wildfire situation out west, numerous large fires, including that large one up around the wheat fields of Oregon that has covered about 45 square miles, and that's going to continue until the weather begins to shift a little bit. Even the monsoon rains down across the area around the close portions of the desert southwest not helping all that much, so we've got dry conditions out there. Firefighting units spread thin, a lot of fires being allowed to burn because there just isn't anybody out there to cover it. But that's out west. What does it look like a little bit closer over here toward the Mid-South area? Well, that's some good news anyway. The conditions in the Mid-South are actually pretty good. We've gotten enough rainfall. The foliage out there is doing a very good job of staying green instead of drying up. So as of right now, there's only two counties in Arkansas under a burn ban. One is Lee County in the News Channel 3 viewing area, and another one is Monroe. Monroe County just outside the viewing area in eastern Arkansas. Those are the only two counties in Arkansas, according to the Arkansas Forestry Commission, that are under these burn bans. The entire rest of the state is clear. Low to moderate fire danger here. Mississippi does not have, as an entire state, there are no burn bans in effect. Tennessee does not issue burn bans on a county-by-county -county basis, unless we're talking about extraordinarily dry drought conditions where fire danger is very likely. So it's more than likely we're not going to see any burn bans anytime soon. And again, you want to check in to see if you can burn stuff like leaves or grass or anything like that out there. Check in with the Forestry Division from Tennessee or your local fire department. Remember, check in first to make certain it's okay to burn. You don't want to start something that turns into a major conflagration that could be life-threatening. So please use caution on stuff like that out there. But good news is things are pretty quiet on the fire front where we're concerned. James R. Gulledge from Humboldt, Tennessee. Beautiful view of some clouds and blue skies out there. Real Estrose sending us a picture of some plants lit by sunlight and featured it on here and on social media. Apparently this was supposed to be a joke about some sunshine out there and beautiful view from South Haven not being able to see it. Unfortunately, uh, this right here, doesn't. if that's humor, I 
can't see the translating all that well. So thank you very much. If it was a joke, a picture, or whatever it was, thanks to Real Estrose for the joke or the picture on that. And Raising Girls from the Yum Yum Tennessee area. Nice view of sunset from last night. Thanks a lot for the gorgeous view from in and around that area for the rest of the evening. Got pictures you'd like to share? We'd love to be able to see them. And again, all you have to do is tweet them to me, Aonic underscore WRHG3, which is where those pictures you just saw came from. You can also post them on my Facebook page, to my Instagram, or if you want to, you can email them to me at austin.onic at WRHG.com out there. Aaron Nicholas Kirkpatrick, what's the winter going to be like? Snow, question mark. It's possible. It's just entirely too early to tell at this point in time what we're going to be winding up with. Colder, probably. Again, snowfall. Uh, really impossible to tell at this point in time looking that far into the future. So possibilities always, but def uh, anything definitive is going to take a while before we get into closer to that season. Until we get closer to that, we're not going to know. But thank you very much uh, for asking that question out there. Uh, Rob Smith, a little bit on the warm side this week, but heating up and thunderstorms toward late this week. Thanks a lot for checking in. And everybody else as well. Michael Patrick Johns from Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks a lot uh, for that one. And Aaron Nicholas Kirkpatrick, any forecast for a lot of snow? Not anytime soon from what we can see at this point in time, so pretty quiet out there. Catch my weekend ending forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3, and I'll be back on with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio from 8 to 10 a.m. with your complete forecast, so stay tuned for more on that. Can't catch them on air because you're out of the radio signal area. Dial them up online at talkbacklivenetwork.org for more. Coming up tonight, uh, again, right before 10 o'clock tonight. Hopefully the clouds will move out of the way, but unfortunately it looks like partly cloudy is about as good as we get. If you'd like to try to spot the Chinese space station Tiangong 2, it'll be rising in the west at about 9.53. It'll be going just right over the area of the North Star between there and fading right before it gets to Bright Star Vega in the constellation of Lyra. So if you'd like to be able to take a look at that again, rising in the west-northwest about 9.53 and fading right before 10 o'clock. That's the Chinese space station there. The International Space Station will be much brighter tonight. And again, hopefully the clouds move out of the way so we can actually see this one out there. But if you look toward the west around 9.10, a little bit less than 45 minutes from where we're recording this, it'll be going very close to Venus at about 9.10 and going right across the sky, right underneath the North Star, looking back toward the north and then setting in the northeast at about 9.18 p.m. And again, hopefully skies will clear up a little bit, but this should be a much brighter pass than what we saw last night. So if you have a chance, go outside and see if you can uh, take a look at this. Get your kids interested in astronomy. Here's a great way to do it with backyard astronomy, watching satellites fly overhead. Good opportunity to see stuff there. And we'll talk more about whether where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones serving in the United States military, we'll take a look around the Mid-South and around the world at various places where American troops, sailors, and service personnel are stationed. That'll be coming up tonight on my Facebook page, Periscope, and Twitter pages at 8.35 p.m in just about 10 minutes' time, so stay tuned for more on that. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's early edition of our weather blog, Weather Overtime. Questions, concerns, anything you'd like to ask or would like to add on to here, let me know. Again, austin.onic at wreg.com is one of the best ways to get in contact with me, and I'll take your suggestions and send them on to Tim Simpson, my supervisor, so he can make a decision as to whether or not we can put this on there. Uh, let's see. Again, thanks a lot for everybody for checking checking in uh, into around the Mid-South area for tonight and everybody else who's checking in there beyond that. We'll have an update on News Channel 3 at 10, so join us live for that. Kristen Holloway has all the day's news. Megan Rice has all the day's sports. And, of course, yours truly will have more with weather coming up here in just about 90 minutes on News Channel 3 at 10. And we will be on time tonight. No sports to interrupt that uh, for this evening. Thanks a lot for everybody for joining us tonight, and keep it tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. Thanks for joining us. Yes.